Hello and welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Ashland in Clearwater County. And we have a busy one today. There's a lot that I want to accomplish in a short amount of time. So first I want to introduce a new mod that we have brought into the city. Um, I want to add parking to the school that we're looking at. I want to introduce a post office, a tram, a courthouse, and have significant residential expansion including our first true mansions and our first true apartments. So a lot to get to, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> so first, uh, the mod I wanted to introduce is this mod that lets you uh, have a, a bit of a better look at your road selection. So it sorts your roads into their width, which is really helpful because it can be difficult to figure out where each uh, where to find your roads when you get a lot of them and when you get uh, vanilla plus plus like i have it can be really challenging to find all of the different roads that you that you have so this is a huge help love this mod it's going to be in the asset and mod collection for this episode so i would highly recommend that you check it out if this is interesting at all to you um, so that is something that i'm going to be referencing the entire time. I don't like that it extends over, but you know, <laughs> it's it's okay. We have a little fire over here. <laughs> it's, uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so there's a tree and this is actually kind of in that building and that's a good uh, segue into one of the first things that we're gonna do. I wanna have a couple of fixes, uh, take care of them. So I had collision on in the previous episode and as a result, there are places where trees are popping up through roads and buildings, and I want to take care of those right now. So I'm just going to kind of do a quick scan of the entire city and where I see trees popping up, I'm going to take care of those because we don't we don't want that. People uh, stopping in the middle of the road because there's a tree growing in it. <laughs> Okay, so I think I got most, if not all of them. If you see any and I miss them, just let me know. I'm happy to uh, to get that fixed. So the very first thing I said I wanted to, to, to fix is parking at the school. This is a problem that, that I created. Um, <laughs> one of the problems with our, our uh, the, the parking uh, facilities that we've been using is that they just, they're really difficult to squeeze in a small area. So I went through the workshop and I picked up a new parking lot and I'm guessing, yep, it's gonna be in parks. <laughs> so it's one of those things that's kind of uncomfortable. So I've got two. I've got this one right here, which is a one by three, and then I've got a two by four. So I think we're gonna try the two by four first. So the space is already occupied. And uh, what we're gonna do is just, first of all, We'll click on that overlay so we can actually see what we're doing. And then we're going to turn Anarchy on. So Control A. And I'm going to place these. We're probably going to need to remove the trees. Oh, nope. Took care of it for us. Now we just have this nice little parking lot here that, uh, you know, is going to be a, 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 I mean, a pretty nice <laughs> amenity for the teachers that want to uh, park at school. <laughs> and now we're going to throw Prop Anarchy on so that we can actually place some trees in this in this area I wanted that to be a little bit nicer of a hedgerow the last thing we want to do is get lighting in here so I think I'm actually just gonna go and steal the lighting from Walmart interestingly it looks like some of these aren't uh, I guess they're pretty good <laughs> so we're, we're gonna go and steal that Oh, we do not want to row like that. <laughs> so make sure that we're, we're doing this in the most appropriate way. Let's turn it to night. We really only need one. Yeah, that, that does a really good job of meeting our lighting needs in this area. As does the fire. <laughs> so I, this, to me, feels a lot better. I think that uh, you know, you're going to need that parking at the school. Um, so not perfect, um, but pretty darn good. Let's go back to daytime. Well, uh, it'll be 942. Perfect time. <laughs> so it looks like we're burning down in the middle of this block. And that's interesting because this is a block that I want to redevelop. So I mentioned the post offices and it looks like this cinema building has seen better days. So what we're going to do is 
eliminate this building and probably use eminent domain and a building around it as well. I picked up what I think is a really fantastic post office asset. So it's this historic post office. And we are going to place that here, take out a significant chunk of downtown. But look at this asset, just beautiful. It feels like a legitimate historic post office. And now it's kind of the centerpiece of downtown. And this is a much taller building than our other buildings. But in the future, when we add a bit more development in this area, it won't be. Look at that. Prop anarchy on again. <laughs> Take that off. <laughs> Always my favorite mistake to make. <laughs> so we have this here. The one thing that I don't, well, actually maybe I don't mind it. So it kind of hangs off into the, into the sidewalk a bit. Maybe I'll scoot that over just a... No, you know, you know, I'm going to accept it. I think it's fine. So let's run this and see how it goes. So I really, I really like this building. I think that it, it feels historic. Uh, the one thing I don't love is the post office vehicles. So we got a fix for that as well. So we're going to our vehicle options and then we'll go into our post office vehicles. And I downloaded a whole bunch of post office type vehicles. So what we're gonna do is look at the post van. We're not gonna allow that to spawn. Same thing with our post truck. And now we have these and they will uh, spawn and take care of all of our postal service needs. And you see that right there? Beautiful vehicle. Another one right there. There we go. They will take care of all of our postal service needs. So. Uh, we don't have a postal servicing or a sorting facility now, but you don't need one. It'll work without it. So um, it'll be just fine. The other thing we might want to consider here, you know, we don't have any parking for the post office. This is a significant building and, a, and definitely a destination. And since we're thinking about it and we just put that parking lot near the school, why not also include one here? Now it seems like that post office is for, or that, that this parking lot is for the post office. So I'm pleased with this. I think it really is a sharp building, really feels good in the downtown area. The one thing I might improve is to add some landscaping. We're seeing fires already. Might as well up the ante. <laughs> the one thing I want to check out is I think I left, yeah, prop line anarchy, this one, um, which functions just slightly differently. Just, just a, a little bit of landscaping that jazzes up a little bit. I tried to avoid the windows, but you, you just can't entirely avoid the windows. So uh, we have some bushes in front of the windows. And this one right here is in a fire area. So it will show up once this area recovers, but that's gonna be a little bit. So the next thing I wanna do, the next fix is, oh, went out of business. <laughs> so this was our, uh, Torgerson's uh, dealer. I think I might eliminate this and we'll search for it again. So it's our farm equipment dealer. And one of the things that I struggled with is I had this facing the wrong direction. So we're just gonna place it now. And now I'm gonna rotate this around. So the main reason that this location is a <laughs> I'm spinning around is that it's a problem is the main sign is is in the wrong direction um, and then the other thing is we have the vehicles that you, you we have these display vehicles you'd assume that we'd want to keep this at least somewhat related to this building so you can see our side doors located in a rational location our front doors located off the parking lot it just all makes a lot more sense the other thing that um, that that I missed is we actually have a sign for this. So I'm gonna find that right now and I'll place that. We'll place that parallel to the highway and that should do the trick. That looks a lot better in my opinion. And hopefully they have enough workers to continue to, to continue operating. But that's something that we're gonna focus on today because we don't have enough workers at this point. You can see our housing demand is through the roof. And one thing I think we can do to fix that is to have apartments. So we had this area, it's not super desirable, truthfully. It's not desirable for commercial. It's not desirable for residential, at least conventional, um, you know, single family residential. You're right along the highway. When we look at our topography, 
it's roughly flat with the highway. So any of that noise that you're getting emanating from the highway is going to hit these, these homes. So it's not a great location, bluntly. But that doesn't mean that no housing can go there or that someone wouldn't attempt to shoehorn some in there. So what we're gonna do is continue our grid up here. Actually, we won't even continue our grid. We're just gonna make sure we have the same road distance. We're gonna turn our, our road guides off. And what I've done, so I don't have the ability right now to have any significant density. So that's 6,500 people. This community would sprawl into the oblivion. And I'm okay with that to a certain extent. I think it feels very natural and reasonable. But at the same time, even small communities have some apartments. So I'm gonna take some liberties here. So I've downloaded a few different assets that I think that we could use. We have these stone crest apartments, which are kind of higher end, and I don't think would really fit well behind a Walmart. <laughs> the next are these uh, Windsor Terrace apartments. These are growable, so we're not gonna use those ones. I don't wanna have to play with that. And then I got these courtyard apartments. So there are two different flavors here. There is this one right here, which is half, I believe this one's half the size. This is six by three. This one's three by three. So the six by three one looks like this. Comes with parking, they face inwards, and they need to line against the road in this particular way. So the one thing that's gonna make this interesting then is I don't wanna orient them in this direction. So what I'm probably gonna do, we'll go ahead, bring that back again, orient it this way, and see if we can fit a road behind it. And what, I, what, what I'd like to do is, is, is have a couple of these in a row. And then from there, um, we'll put in a, a park in the center. Because if you have this density of, of residential uses, you really need to make sure that there is ample um, green space for people because it can be really dehumanizing to, to have this amount of uh, you know, this density of uh, uh, of apartments without some sort of green space to recreate, to just take in nature, whatever. Uh, you, need, you need to have something. So we are gonna use our drives. So I think we either use the drives or fillers from our parking lots. Let's give it a shot and see how it looks. That's not great. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the filler. That's better, it stretches a bit further. It's really wide though, I don't love that. I think we are going to stick with the, the, the filler here. Um, I think that that will at least, we'll, we'll need to use our, our painter a bit, our surface painter to make this look a little bit better, but this will at least give us the ability to have a couple of these. So we're going to have these two sets here. Let's take a look at these buildings in a realistic population. So I went in before the episode began. Uh, this was listed as one. So if you're going to use this and you're using realistic population, they calculated that this was one unit. So I went through and I counted the doors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, doubled 16 households at each of these. So this is 32 households. And when you think about it, we have some of these other blocks and let's look at the number of houses. This is 11 in this whole block. So we have 16 right here. So you can see that just by adding these, we're increasing the density significantly. Um, so we need to be aware of that. As, as we place these, it's certainly necessary. We have a need, these filled up right away and we could certainly have more, but we just, we wanna be aware of that. So let's give them a park space. So I'm looking to see what would fit and truthfully, it's not a lot. <laughs> so just something to be aware of. So these are three tiles wide. We're gonna add one more road through here and then we'll add in some more of our apartments on either side and kind of just leave this for the time being. So this is a significant housing development and we can see that right away they're filling up. They're unhappy. <laughs> Hopefully they get happier over time. Look at that. They've got this nice playground in between this area. Now, the one thing I'd want to focus on here would be some sort of buffer because there's going to be semis coming around here probably at two or three in the morning. And the last thing you'd want to do is have these people subjected to, that live here subjected to that noise. The other thing is we'd probably want some sort of connection between these roads. Oh, busy town. So we've got level four buildings, tourism, which is great. 
trolley bus, that's awesome. Tourism specialization, a whole bunch of other policies, some new roads, including our roads with trees, highways. Wow, just a, just a ton of stuff. We're getting a whole bunch of our, our new roads from Vanilla Plus Plus as well. They're all unlocking for us. We're also getting some of our bigger power buildings, which is really helpful because we're in kind of a rough spot with that. Some of our natural disasters stuff, a lot of our content creator um, uh, assets, this interesting flea market, I like that. And then, uh, you know, city planning policies, which are also very important. So uh, a nice, nice, a nice uh, thing for the city right now. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna add this. So I had to use Anarchy to place this. I think it's really important that we are able to do this. So the unfortunate thing is that obviously limits our ability to place trees in this location. So um, we're gonna have some landscaping, but it's not gonna be as significant as I had hoped. So this is unfortunate. You wanna line up this road if you can, but this is certainly, certainly an externality. And I was realizing that this, there was no road behind this building and I wanna make sure that parking is connected. So next, I do wanna use the, 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 the surface painter a little bit. We'll just touch up these areas right here, just a, just a little bit. It's always kind of painful to see what the surface painter does to some of these areas. I'm going to just either need to, to live with some of the wonkiness or alternatively, I can try to back this off just a little bit from here. It's probably as good as it gets, unfortunately. But what we can do is use landscaping to hide everything. <laughs> So that's that's my favorite. So hopefully you like that too. And I missed one more road, so we will get that in there as well. There we go. So nice and clean. We probably could have sc scooched this road over to fix it. Um, and we also have landscaping now all the way around here. That's nice. I think that this creates a more hospitable environment for everyone here. And uh, it's certainly a place that uh, is less stark to live in. And that's that's kind of the, the, the point. We're also going to kind of screen this from the highway so that if you were in here and some of that freeway noise was, was coming, it, it'd be a little bit better. It's not gonna be perfect by any means. The nice thing, you know, uh, is that some of these windows are facing internally. So it, presumably the noise generated from the apartments would really be self-contained. So that, that's good. And this is a lot of households. So that is a big benefit to the city. You can see our population just really jumped by adding these. We probably could add another couple more if we wanted to, but I don't want to overdo it. It is a small town. And at this point, I think that this would be, you know, quite a lot for the community to sustain. So the next thing I want to think about are other housing options. So we've got our apartments now. And we could continue to build apartments. What I'm thinking is there are two different types of housing options that I want to build. So first of all, we have the Ashland family and they have done an excellent job with their farm. Uh, at this point, they are, you know, this is a mega farm and they want to do a little bit more with their, uh, their household. So what I think they're going to do is start to think about having a bigger house on the water. They want they want a really special place. So what we're gonna do is build a road off from this road right here. And actually, I don't have my road names on. Let's get our names back on. Okay, so off from White Street, which maybe we will rename Ashland Street. We are going to extend this road up significantly and then meander it along the water. Oh, <laughs> I did it again. Prop Anarchy, just the death of me. And truthfully, I didn't really follow the coast all that well, so I think we're gonna take it back. Try once more. Probably should've used my planning roads here. That's a, a lesson to me. Still not following it all that well. I think I'm gonna upgrade this, or that's what you wanna call it, to my planning road, as we think about where we go next. So, I downloaded some really neat mansions. 
So we've got these historic mansions and I want to build one for one of the most prominent families in the entire community. So this is going to be the Ashland family mansion. They've they've spent a long a, 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 they've, they've really spent their entire lives working on this farm and supporting the community and they've decided that they want this little chunk of land to be theirs. And the nice thing about that is for them is they've got a beach. They've got a really great view of the downtown area. So this would be a very impressive chunk of property. So what we're going to do is build a loop around their property. So now that we have the loop, we can throw in their mansion. We've got a couple of different options here. We've got this European mansion, this historic mansion, this other historic mansion. Ooh, I like this. Look at that. Yeah, this is, this is nice. They've got a pool. Because, I mean, if you're on the water, what more would you want than a pool? <laughs> so we will add this and we're going to clean up the landscape because on a mansion, I, I would assume that they would want uh, a very, very, very manicured appearance. We're going to pause this so that we don't have any issues with our building. First thing we're going to do is add a fence. And I really think that our park fence works well for this. Let's try to make sure that we're even. So we'll come up. Oh, let's see. A way that we can make this a little bit cleaner is to go through here and we'll turn zoning off on these side roads. So we can at least see what's going on. And now I'll try to go four-ish tiles out. Have our fence there. About the same on this side. Okay, so that's, I think that's a, a pretty nice feel there. We could probably cut this fence back in, uh, but I, you don't really need the fence in, in the back. I, you know, I think it's honestly undesirable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have uh, some fruiting trees along the road to provide some privacy. I'm actually going to go back on that. Those aren't very tall, so maybe we can find some sort of shade tree. Make sure that we get it from the workshop. Yeah, this this is much better at providing that privacy. So what we're going to do is just make sure that our distance makes sense. Then we'll line it across here. Do the same thing on the sides. And then from there, we're going to add in some of our decorative trees. Now, I'm not a landscape architect and I'm not going to pretend to be one. I'm just going to do what feels good to me. I'm not sure that this house is perfectly centered. So this actually right here, if you count the trees, this is actually perfectly centered. So we are going to scoot the house over just a bit. Now we'll need to do a little bit with our landscaping as well. There we go. That kind of cleans things up a little bit. Uh, it still might not be perfectly centered. So it's 12. So this is six. It's pretty darn close. I might just not let perfect be the enemy of good. You can also see that this fence is a little bit wider. Oh, this is going to bug me, but I'm going to let it go. Okay. So it's a nice big estate. We're going to soften the coast a little bit because clearly that's what they would do. They'd want to make sure that the, the coast is as nice as it could be around their property. And then we're going to add, add a bit of sand. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we're not going to add any sand because obviously I am not doing well with it. <laughs> this will be fine. They can walk off to this little private beach there. And from here, we could add a sidewalk or something of that nature to make this connection. Uh, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. I think that we could also add paths around the house. I'm not going to get into that level of detail. What I am going to do is add a few more larger trees around the property. And I know what I'm looking for. I'm just not finding it. And that is I want some sort of flowering tree. I might just use these vanilla flowering trees and add those right into the front of the house. 
And you can imagine that they might actually want to have some sort of orchard or something like that on their property as well, or a garden, and that would be another thing to think about in this, in this particular area. That would be some sort of small gardening sort of area for their property. So uh, maybe not the most elaborate. This is certainly not my forte, but I do think it helps create atmosphere. And I do think that a family this prominent would certainly have some sort of monument to themselves <laughs> in the form of a, a gigantic mansion. <laughs> so now everyone knows that this is where the Ashlands live. Uh, we do need to get power to this location, and that's going to be something that they're probably not super excited about because of how it needs to come, which is a rural power line. Or Suburban. This is one of the new assets that we've added this week as well. Someday, maybe we can take that down, but that day is not today. But we can run this now, and we're going to upgrade that road and then name it. And because this is a, an area that will have higher end housing, you'll assume that they lobbied the city to get street trees put in place as well and had their house flooded out because, uh, you know, city skylines. <laughs> I wonder if I need this extra line here. No. So that looks significantly better. So now I've got Ashland Court and Ashland Street for the Ashland family, and we've got Prop Anarchy off. <laughs> but we're, we're good there. So uh, the, the not, not the most important of builds in terms of adding population. We should make sure. Interesting, it actually doesn't have any population, which is interesting, it's just tourists. But that's okay, we can imagine. <laughs> so that reminds me though, I clicked on this building and one of the things I noticed is Wow, we don't actually have cargo trucks assigned. So we're going to add that here. Okay, one of the things that people pointed out is that I do park uh, is leveled up the high school. <laughs> didn't expect that. One of the things that was pointed out is that I didn't actually rotate these spawn points. So as I kind of go and see some of these buildings, I am gonna rotate the spawn points, make sure that they're in the right location so that vehicles can actually access them. And the spawn points are supposed to point outwards towards the road. So, got that fixed there. Love it. We're doing good. So next up, we've got this area right here. And one of the things that I thought would be really nice, you kind of see that there's this natural point. And right now, this county, Clearwater County, is only Ashland. Now, I don't foresee Ashland being the principal community in this county. But right now it is. So what we're gonna do is build a courthouse with the backdrop of this water. And I think it's gonna be a really unique atmosphere in this area. And what that will allow us to do is really frame the entire neighborhood around this courthouse. So we're gonna place our road and I want that to be completely parallel to the water. So I am going to put my snap twos on. And let's look for our courthouse. So we picked up this great courthouse asset. We can center that within this block and now work around this. So one of the things that we could have done, we could have either placed this, huh, did, oh, oh yeah, this is not road access, that's right. Uh, so we've got that here. And I think what we're gonna do is, just kind of have a, a, a little municipal area behind here, not municipal rather, a park area where people could explore and enjoy a little bit. So nothing all that complex, just a nice little area for people. What we can do is we can add a couple of assets in here. Maybe we'll make it a square. So this isn't perfectly balanced and that's okay because I really want this square area to be nice and balanced. So what I'm gonna do now is go into some of our park life assets. And, I, and in Verde Beach, I actually uh, went through and grabbed some of these and had a similar, uh, I guess, layout. What I want to do here is we'll add in some of our 
I'll add in some of these spaces and now I'm looking and because I'm using the traditional uh, the vanilla pads, you kind of get these messy lines. You might actually want to upgrade these to the park pads. Now I don't love that it puts benches all over the place, like it's absolutely going insane and it needs benches. You got to sit every 10 feet, I guess. Maybe this is going to be very active. I don't know. Uh, either way, it does add a, a few too many of those for my tastes, but it'll be okay. It gives us the ability to place some of these assets here. So I'm going to move these out just a bit. They're not perfectly straight. With move it, we could line these all up. You see that straightens them out right there. And now if we wanted to clean this up even further, we could go through here with the roads and, or with this, these pads and try to fix it. There's some wonkiness in the corners and I think that we could address that as well with landscaping. I'm not sure that I like anything that I just did. So I think that we might just address some of this, this craziness with landscaping. So what I'm thinking is we can add some hedges and maybe trees around this area. The problem is you got all these benches. <laughs> Again, so many benches. And there's no way for me to eliminate those. So we're just going to have to fudge it a little bit. Nope, I hate this. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to try something else. We are going to have a planter box though. So we'll add, maybe that will help. We'll just add these in the corners, kind of overlap some of that, and then add some larger trees here again. Uh, I know it's my, my favorite way to hide madness. <laughs> that is very large, too large for this area. I think regular medium will probably do the trick. And that's okay. Um, the other thing that we could do is have some flowering bushes kind of growing in this grassy area. Maybe now it feels a little bit more planned, not just, well, they did a bad job, so <laughs> this is what they end up with. And then around the outside, so these will look better once I upgrade this road, or I can at least try to make it look better. We should probably also have some sort of fountain in here to make this look a little bit more grand. And let me just sing the praises of this particular mod. Uh, find it, it's just so helpful. I forget where things are and I don't have to worry about it because it doesn't matter. <laughs> just the, it's one of those mods that I, I wish were included in the base game because it's so incredibly helpful. So here I might use some of these colorful trees to give the, the area a, a little bit more uh, a little bit better of a feeling, I guess. And that is clearly the very best way of, of putting it. <laughs> it's, so one of the things that, you know, I'm sure that there are landscape architects just cringing uh, in their chairs or, or biologists. You've got all the same tree here. If there's a disease, it's going to hop tree to tree to tree to tree. That's true. Never do this in real life. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. That's why even like when you, when you see street trees in your neighborhood, uh, at least contemporary planting of, of street trees, you'll see that they alternate. Because if you get a, a disease, uh, I know we've learned this in our area with emerald ash borer, that you can really run into trouble when you uh, just have one variety of tree placed everywhere. What you end up with then is uh, if there is a problem, any sort of disease, the the entire species will, uh, will go. That's not that's not at all what you want. So here we are going to turn off road bending. And I'm going to show you what I'm thinking in just a second. So I'm thinking I need, I need all my prop anarchies and, and regular anarchy off. And what I want to do is have this road be the prominent feature in this area. And I want it to connect up to another prominent road. And that's this road here. So the reason why I think this road is so important. So it's Lighthouse Way and 13th Street. And... Really, those are two vistas that are really important in the community. You see the lighthouse lines up with, you know, more or less with the lighthouse 13th with the ocean over there. 
So these two roads come together to turn into 13th, and I want 13th to go straight to the lighthouse, or to the courthouse. So we're going to bend this road. We're going to create a new grid, and there's going to be nothing organic about this, which might make, or nothing, uh, nothing rigid about this, which might make some of you happy, might make some of you very unhappy. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> So this will be what we use to form our blocks in this area. And we are going to master plan this entire area out. And I think that one of the things that we're going to want here is as this ends, I want to have really a nice big green for this entire neighborhood. So another significant park. And things will emanate out from here. I want to go back and look at the angle that we used here because we're going to want to repeat that angle. So we're going to use 135 because that is perfect. And I'm holding down my shift key to get both angles down. Okay, so we've got our perfect angles there. And we will use this to develop our street network in this area. We're, we're going to probably end this here. Well, no, let's carry it all the way through for a few more blocks, and then we'll use this road to kind of frame some of those areas. So this would be entirely master planned. It's the, at this point, the most important government area within the entire county. And they've kind of kicked it up a notch in terms of their planning. They're actually master planning this area. And it will feel very planned. I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the sides here. I think we're going to leave that for the time being. The other thing that we're going to do in this area is have a streetcar line. And I think that we're going to break this grid up right here. And people will be forced to go around here. We'll have a one-way loop around there. It'll be like a giant roundabout. And that'll help with our streetcar as well when we bring that up here. Now at this point, even though I have this kind of rigid setup, I'm still letting the topography guide my decisions. The one thing I think I might improve is we don't have road bending on, so we very well could go up and try to mirror the coast a little bit better. Though we will need anarchy on to accommodate this. But I think that looks a lot better. We, we are getting some really interesting inter uh, intersections as a result of our road development pattern though. So and I think we're going to do something very similar over here. We'll just start making our roads and then we'll follow the coast. This will kind of be where this ends and now we're going to rotate our grid over. Now the thing to think about here is we have very long block lengths. Let's take a look. Yeah, so this it's a Approximately, uh, so it's covered kind of weird here. Let me see if I can move that. All right. So this is a thousand feet. That's really long. You know, in some communities that would be four blocks. So uh, I, I want to divide this up a little bit. I think that 500 is still a long block. Well, I mean, it's not that bad. It's certainly doable. So we'll break it up a little bit here. And then we might want to have some pedestrian connections through here as well, especially through the park. We're going to want to make connections all the way through here. And I don't know that we're going to build the park today, but it's certainly something that we can, that we're going to want to focus on in the future. So here, I want to make sure that I'm using my road guidelines to mirror everything. So this is an interesting area because I don't know exactly what to do with the streets. So what I think we're going to do is just accept the larger lots in this area and tee into this farm road. That's a better anger, anger. <laughs> it's a better angle. So that will, uh, will help us kind of have a logical transition into that area. Next, we're going to want to try to make some connections with these older neighborhood streets. And truthfully, we might start to break up our road network a little bit here so that we can line these up nicely and bring these grids together. 
It looks like things kind of narrowed up for me on this other side, and I want to avoid that as much as I can. Some of it is going to be unavoidable. This is going to be another example of our, uh, our deviation from the established roadway network so we can get those roads to line up. And I think again, we're going to break in here and turn our road into the farm road. And we'll have another unique block there. Same thing here, we're starting to, to really break apart. So I like that it kind of goes from this really rigid and planned environment to, to one that is more organic, meandering, and we'll, we're still gonna make sure that this is well connected. So we're gonna wanna break these blocks up. This is really, really long. And the way that we're gonna do that, I think is we're gonna have some radial side streets kind of going through here. These will be perfectly straight, but because these roads are not, they're gonna break it up a bit. Create a variety of block sizes. Maybe not like this though. <laughs> so it's kind of doing some things there. And I'm kind of eyeballing what I think is uh, about the 500 feet mark. I, I, maybe I'm completely off base there. Maybe this is actually 250. Let me see. Okay, that's yeah, about a little over 500. So that is a, a walkable block in my in my estimation. We're making sure that we're connecting all of our roads up because that connectivity is really going to benefit us in the future. Now, we've got this triangle here that is interesting. So there are a few things we could do here. We could try to connect back into our old or to our, our planned grid, and I think that's what we're going to do. So this will leave us with some larger blocks or larger lots. That's okay. Then through here, kind of the exact same thing. We're gonna break these blocks up a bit and it's gonna be very upset with what we're doing. And we're gonna leave this little triangle here. Well, no, we're not. I was gonna say we could have another park there if we wanted to. This might be an opportunity for a school campus, so we might just reserve that for the future. So this is by no means a perfect grid. There's a, a grid-ish thing happening up there, but it is well connected and kind of free flowing and organic. So what we are going to struggle with here is putting our water pipes underneath our roads, even though that's where they belong. Uh, we, we certainly need to, to make sure that they are there. However, this roadway network is going to make that a challenge. And we have used all the nodes. <laughs> so this neighborhood is is now planned. So from here, you might be wondering, what do we do next? Well, we need to think about certain services that we'd have in the neighborhood. So one of the things I want to do is make this park, but I don't want a gate there. So I got an invisible park gate. And we are going to place that right here. Center that nicely and then we will paint our park area. We'll name this Courthouse Square. It's not really a square. <laughs> That'll be the joke of the town. <laughs> that Courthouse Square is actually a rectangle. <laughs> All right, so from here, I want to, I'm gonna add a couple pads. I'm not gonna decorate the park today. We'll get to that in a future episode, but I do want it to be functional for the time being. Okay, I think that's fairly centered. We will at least deal with that for now, and this will be kind of our central gathering place. We might actually break this up in the future and have some sort of uh, event space where you could see food trucks or something like that, but I wanna think about this more. I don't wanna focus on this right now. What I want to focus on is getting 
some of this neighborhood developed. So what we're going to do, we obviously need to get over here. So we're going to look at what would be the most desirable land to develop and start there. Oh, this road bugs me now. Just kind of kind of curves out just a bit, goes up just a bit. I'll choose my battles and I'll at least make it flat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to continue to leave our planning roads on very purposefully. The The thing that we're going to try to, to maintain here is uh, some sort of, well, I guess we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to zone this entire thing right up front and uh, watch our, our residential demand plummet. So we are going to just try to be sensitive to that. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is I, I, we're going to plan this with trams in mind because that's something I want to add to the community now that we have the ability to do so. So right off the bat, I want to have a one-way tram around this park space and <laughs> accidentally ruin the park. I'll turn ruining back on. Oh, and... Uh, <laughs> That was a mistake. There we go, we've got it fixed. Okay, so this will kind of frame our entire courthouse area. Now the thing that we're gonna to wanna to take a look at is how do we actually get to the courthouse? So I think this is probably close enough, but I don't know that that is well, the way that we wanna just leave it, like good enough. Uh, why don't we have, have this come up here and maybe turn around in front of the courthouse? So I picked up some special tram assets thanks to Planner Pete in the Discord server and one of my Patreon supporters. Appreciate you, Planner. Uh, we uh, are going to use these special assets to really make a slower tram network, and I think it's going to feel very nice as a result. So we need to think of a couple of things right off the bat. Where is our tram depot? That's going to be an important thing. I think we're going to want to keep that kind of out of sight, out of mind. So we might actually focus that near the back of the grocery store here, which is kind of a weird spot and I feel bad for these folks, but the the other logical location would be a downtown area or behind the Walmart. And maybe, maybe oh, I feel bad doing that to these, these folks over here who already have to deal with the lights from Walmart and then you give them one more thing, a tram depot. It probably is, is logical though, so that's, shoot. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> I don't like it, but it is logical. Okay, so what we're doing here is giving a place for the trolleys to get on, and we need to connect that up over to this neighborhood. We will go down Lighthouse Lane. It's a commercial corridor, so that would make a lot of sense to have uh, quick access to this area and I'm trying to think, I didn't, yeah, I used the right ones over here. Okay. So it is not happy with me right now. So I'm going to turn ruining off so I don't destroy all of these businesses. Then we're gonna go down this way. Interesting. That is strange. I do not like that at all. So for some reason it's taking that parking lot road and saying, that must have a trolley line going to it. Interesting. So I'll add the drive. Yeah, the drive is is not working with it. So I think that my best solution might be to use these suburban roads, even though they're really wide and there's parking, <laughs> which is not ideal. Now, I don't really have another good option outside of using those suburban roads, because I don't want all the crosswalks. So I'll go in through Traffic Manager and turn off the parking right there, and that cleans things up a little bit. We continue going with our tram line. What I think we're going to do is then we're going to head down this street here towards our main drag. So it's interesting. Our main street is actually right here near Ashland Square, and then it comes up. 
So you might be wondering why I am going with trams first, and that's because of, at least in the US, historical development patterns as they related to trams and, uh, as trams and buses. Trams came first, that was what we had, and then buses came. Uh, and they replaced the trams, uh, quite unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> like it's, it's actually not, not wonderful that uh, that occurred. So the unfortunate thing is now we're missing the high school, which I do think would be a significant destination. So what I think we're going to do, we need to make a connection to this tram line. We're going to head down here and then back up. And then we'll have two routes going in different directions. And all along this route, because I left ruining off, trees are popping up. So I will turn ruining back on. Got the same problem here. That is going to drive me bonkers. Might just deal with a little bit of wonkiness there with the crosswalks because the alternative is, unless it, yeah, that doesn't, it looks a little bit better. It's still not ideal. The problem is these big suburban sidewalks have these green spaces, which cause problems too. It's probably even a little bit better. Maybe that's the way we'll, we'll handle it. It'll be kind of one wonky spot. It's not going to be the end of the world. And now because we need to be able to loop with these trolleys, we'll send them towards the high school. And this is ugh, probably not the best location for it. So I think that we're going to back this off and we'll send it down, I think it's Smithson Street. The idea being that we can reach the high school, we can reach this church, we can reach this future square, and we're going to have a bunch of park upgrades very soon. And then maybe we can run this right past the front door of the high school to make our connection with our main line. All right, that's good. I just kind of want to go through and make sure that with ruining, I don't have any more trees popping up. Okay, so I think we're good there. So at this point, what we need to take care of is actually getting our trolley lines running. So let's set up these lines. We'll go into here. And what we're going to do is have a loop. And it's these are going to be we're going to we're going to use some relatively low speed trolleys. So we're going to have frequent stops for two blocks or so. Okay, so there's our first line. Now our next line is going to mirror this inner line, but it's not going to be completely symmetrical because we don't need to go to the courthouse with this one. We just want to make sure that there is always an opportunity. This wouldn't be necessarily the easiest to navigate. In the future, we might separate these two, but it'll give someone the opportunity to go in both directions. Okay, so now we have our two lines. Let's take a look at them. So we have this really long one and number one, let's change our vehicle. So we have these St. Charles streetcars. We're going to use those and we'll name this first one, the courthouse line. And I have these being named after the streets. So we might, we might just leave this as it is. And I want to make sure that the, yeah, the, the kind of maroon one is the courthouse line. So we're good there. Now, so the interesting thing about these streetcars, let's take a look at them first of all. I don't see them. <laughs> Curious. The vehicles are not yet. Oh, I didn't give them water. <laughs> Fair enough. Your move now, Tram Depot. Are we good? There we go. And let's take a look at these. What fantastic vehicles. Aren't those just neat? They feel historic. I really like it. So the thing about these these vehicles in particular is that they only go eight miles per hour. <laughs> so we could speed that up, but that's one of the reasons why I didn't think it was that big of a deal to have close stop spacing because these are very slow. So I'm noticing now what the, the, what the one and the two mean and that is the length of the cars. So I might actually switch this. Oh, hmm. 
I'll use the exact same one. So these don't color, uh, but they'll work just fine. So I think that that's gonna be a nice little upgrade to the community. And I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. I do wanna fill in some of these neighborhoods here. What I think we're gonna do is, is work on filling our way up towards the courthouse. And we will use our conventional zoning that we've had. And this will allow us to at least make our power connection and kind of have a logical uh, logical connection to the, the courthouse for the time being. We will fill in probably working from the water out as these would be the most desirable properties. This is kind of more of a, a gameplay thing where we're, we're, we're doing what the game likes. And that is connecting these without, uh, without power lines. So I do want to speed this up for a second and watch this fill in. Okay, so this will take a little while to fill in, but there's a couple of other things that we need to do in the meantime anyway, so let's focus on that, not worry too much about how everyone is sad they don't have power. <laughs> so one of the other things I wanted to take a look at is go going, I wanted to go back into this advanced vehicle options because there were some recommendations made about the fire trucks in the Discord server as well, and I wanted to take those. So we got this really slick looking fire truck, and I want to make sure that we're using that and not this Tonka looking fire truck. So we're going to disable this vehicle. This will help us with our fires, and it's so much nicer looking. You can see that just by zoning this little area, we have completely decimated our demand for residential zoning. Oh, and we've finally made our connection. Nice. So this will slowly make its way around there. and It's really working out nicely. How's the tram doing? Let's take a look at our line. You can see that uh, many of our stops are getting used now. Kind of want to go look at our transit overview. 40 a week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something. It's, it's something. Interestingly, I think that our traffic flow has, has fallen because of our tram lines. And you can kind of see it, that where these trams are, they're going slow. They are slowing things down and making it difficult to travel in those corridors. So kind of something to be aware of. This might actually be a spot where we'd want a signalized intersection because of the tram, because of the traffic volumes. So I think that we are going to signalize this so that when the trams make the left out of here it's a little bit easier for them we might want to look up the rest of the corridor and do the same thing the rest are probably okay but these were probably some trickier spots for the tram to, to handle so sometimes you add signals not because it's warranted based on a traffic from a from a traffic congestion perspective but rather because to, to be able to make transit work, you have to have the signal there. Otherwise, the tram vehicle gets, in, in reality anyway, we get stuck. And we certainly don't want that. So the other one of the other things I wanted to take a look at today, uh, kind of just as we're, we're going through this, I, I think that we're almost at the end here. I wanted to look at our parking situation because I don't know that I had the mod set up appropriately before. And uh, uh, I just want to go into my settings and look at traffic manager. Now I want to enable more realistic parking and enhanced vehicle AI, which will need some CPU resources, but this will help out with parking. So I know that one of the concerns was that the Walmart parking looks insanely low. Well, now that we have this enabled, the parking lot should start to fill up. So, and we should see the exact same situation over here at the high school, which you know, already had some Pretty decent utilization. Oh, we are missing an island and a light. Just vanished. That's no good. We can easily fix that though. We will take off roads. And once again with our lighting, let's go into night. Make sure that we're spacing these appropriately. There we go. Interestingly, we do have a dark spot over here. Here we go. Are we getting fireworks? <laughs> well, that's an exciting soccer game, football game, whatever you want to call it. 
That is, I guess, one of the perks of this being a city park is that now our high school gets fireworks. Exciting. <laughs> so this is, it's, it's fun looking at this view. We'll take maybe just one last cruise around the city before we close this out. I think that we've made some good changes today. You can see that we're starting to build out. We need to finish out this neighborhood and that's probably a next episode thing along with works, work on our main park over here and some of our other smaller parks. But boy, this is starting to feel like a city. You can see it's dark right there where our farms are. I'd like to get these farms built out to the road before we leave Ashland. Got these new apartments, very nice location. Fortunately, got some weird flickering, interesting. Uh, and we've still got our dark spot in the Walmart parking lot. I kind of want to fix that real quick before we go while we're in night mode. And then I want to take a look at our mansion at night. It's a very nice estate. Look at these views, these city views that the Ashlands would have from behind their house. Just outstanding. Just outstanding. This asset though doesn't have any lighting. There's probably something that could be done to improve that and I might need to think, that, think about that a bit because right now it looks like a place that's looking to be robbed. <laughs> you can see that they're like, we're not home. All the lights are off. It's night. No problem. All right, so lastly, let's fix this Walmart parking lot. I do not like what I've done with it. There we go. Now some might complain that this is way too, way too bright, but I think that's exactly what Walmart would be going for. You're coming in off the highway and you can tell Walmart is there and it is safe. You can go there and feel completely comfortable shopping. Boy, is that bright. <laughs> what an eyesore from the neighborhood. You were over here. This house is, it's lost some value. I'm not sure why I'm getting that flickering. That's something I'm gonna, I'm, I've still been working through that. But I get it every now and then. But yeah, you, you, you'd you be over here, you'd look. It feels very urban in this little rural town with the tram stops and the bright lights of the city <laughs> or Walmart, whatever works for you. So I think we're in a good spot. And then I think we're going to leave it here. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have, oh no, oh no, we have power issues. We can't leave it there, but we're right on the edge. All right, it's only at night that we're experiencing these. I want to take a look at our budget before I close this out. Okay, that's why we're fudging the power budget during the day, but not at night. So we're going to fix that. And now we can close this out. Hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit the notification icon. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, they help me make all this content. They support me. Uh, and help me and allow me to upgrade my equipment and I appreciate them. I also appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching your views, your likes, your subscribes. They help uh, improve the channel's reach and ensure that uh, more people keep finding it and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I am going to leave you with a brief city tour. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.